Ima, Ika Yalami, Gilondo Loze, Ooh, I'm Benami, Zungangi Shilana. I'm happy I came with my wife because uh, I probably would have remained in Gombe after this conference. <laughs> I told Her Excellency yesterday that the work was very important for me. Since I got to Gombe on Saturday, I seem to have added some few kilos. So the work yesterday helped me to reduce some. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor, of Gombe State, I'm excited that you will be giving the keynote address. If my memory is correct, I don't think we've ever heard that the deputy governor in the state where we are hosting will give the keynote address. But I'm happy that because you are a medical sociologist, and I know you will do justice to that address. Our chairman. Allow me to just call him Igwe. He promised me when he comes to say a few words, and as I told His Excellency, we must hold him. He must do something in Gombe. He's an entrepreneur. The industrial park he will definitely visit. All my living ancestors, what I nicknamed, and Dr. Wada warned me that very soon. I will join the League of Living Ancestors. <laughs> but I want to enjoy this one year remaining and still tease them a little bit. Let me redeem time, let me align on the already established protocol. It is indeed my honor and privilege to welcome you to this landmark 96th annual conference tag to SCD 2023. And I want to thank Mazi Samohamua for making that hard decision that we should come to Gombe. When I took over from him, there were a lot of cries and reasons why we shouldn't come to me. But I believe in what he has done, and I was ready to implement what he has decided. And as of today, we can see that we will be happy and grateful for that decision. I will structure this address along the lines of three major contemporary issues to make it quite insightful. One, the impending doom and collapse of regulated drug supply. Two, drug revolving funds need to be need for sustainable redress. And three, infusing renewed energy into pharmacy education for a powerful future. It's a good thing to ensure the regulation and control of profession to appropriate professional bodies as it ultimately places the destiny of these professions in the hands of those who practice them. For Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, the mandate transcends regulating pharmacies and other workforce cadres to the regulation and control of pharmaceutical premises in both the public and private sectors, including facilities for manufacture, importation, export, distribution, wholesale, retail, hospital drug dispensing and sales, and other formal components of the veterinary practice and much more. The sensitivity of these endeavors listed, which are legally considered as drug matters, is, funda is the fundamental reason most nations of the world find it imperative to bring drug use matters under central or federal control. Nigeria is not an exception to this norm, and this is why the drug matters are listed as item 21 in part one of second schedule of the 1999 constitution. It is under this control that the federal government to ensure adequate protection of life in terms of ensuring easy access to safe, efficacious and affordable drugs to consumers of health in our country. It will be a thing of joy to see our beloved society take charge of this endeavor. But capacity and competence to deliver is not available today without emotional paralysis. Even the status quo of the federal government, government, poor funding has compared us to these 
with over 2 million unregistered pharmaceutical premises, over 35 drug market, open drug markets, dispensing physicians in private hospitals, a thriving drug abuse and misuse culture, which is seriously consuming our people, especially our youths and even women. There were some discussions during the work we had with Her Excellency and some of the facts coming out from Gombe. Drug abuse is a big problem. And we are ready to partner with the state government to put in our future to make sure that this is stamped out. As far back as 1988, the poorly regulated drug distribution channel, according to WHO studies, generated an alarming 33% of fake drugs from open markets and PPMDL PPM holders, leading to a fatality rate of 7%. A review exercise in 1998, just 10 years later, put the incidence of fake drugs in our distribution channels to about 49.6%, with a therapeutic failure of 10.8% and 12.8% mortality rate in Nigeria. Despite modest output from PC, NAVDA, and NDLA, some 25 years after the incidence of fake drugs with attendant mobility and mortality rate, it is still very substantial with different studies of national, at national and international levels, variously postulated that it's in between 16% to 48% in the last 25 years. The federal government, probably conscious of the sensitivity of drug matters, has placed in the executive list, did not dissolve the Government Council, as we know, of NAVDA and NDLA, but was not guided in a dissolution of the Government Council of the Pharmacy Council of Nigeria. PCN, which speaks, regulates, controls, and issues certificates to practice all retail, goals, sale, distribution, importation, and so on of veterinary, dressing, drugs, and vaccine, and consumables in Nigeria. You cannot possibly have a consuming evil or sort monstrosity I am controlling, and you walk away as a government because some financial technocrats think that they want to save money. It's important to have a comprehensive application of responsibility. It amounts to a comprehensive application of responsibility by an otherwise responsible government to contemplate this with Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, which is both a peculiar and a unique professional regulation, regulatory council. Finally, even with the poor view of existing laws, the federal government is compared in Section 91 of PCN Act 2022 to provide budgetary and extra budgetary allocation to PCN. Your Excellency, sir, as governor, as governor of this state and as chairman of Northern Governor, I want to present here, sir, that it will be unlawful and illegal for the budget office to stop allocation to Pharmacy Council of Nigeria. In the, in, the, in the interest of the public. I do hope, I do hope that the Chief Law Officer of this country guides our President Tinubu and his administration on this crucial issue. The PCN is mandate, therefore, covers a market that is conservatively put at about $2 billion as of today. Drug revolving need for sustainable redress. One of the salient fallouts of the old essential drug policy of the 43 1989 now essential drug act cap 252 LFN in 2004 is the creation of the drug revolving fund. The scheme is designed to deal with the challenges of the perennial out of stock syndrome of drugs in public health institutions. The DRS scheme was working very well from its inception until the different hospital management began to mutilate the original configuration of the DRM manner. A fundamental provision of DRM was a compelling need to designate the pharmacist, preferably the head of the department, as a project manager and a compulsory signature to the DRM scheme. As the name of the scheme suggests, any diversion of the proceeds of DRM ultimately leads to financial decapitation and collapse of the scheme. To project these facts 
in the well-known DRM, Your Excellency, the DRM tackled the menace of this art of stock syndrome in public uh, pharmacy departments. Uh, I'm giving an example of the National Orthopedic Hospital, which was a flagship over a decade ago to give birth to pharmacy art. They were able to uh, build a pharmacy art worth 300 million naira in 2014 without a collapse of the DRM program because the management of the hospital at that time gave to the much needed cooperation with pharmacists. The militating pain of the total DRM scheme in various federal health institutions at the federal level and states, even local government, remains the unfortunate reality that DRM proceeds were diverted to other endeavors apart from draws contrary to the provision of the DRM panel. As it stands today, with about 56 federal health institutions, these institutions, Your Excellency, owe the pharmaceutical industries who are ready to invest in Mumbai, who are ready to partner with states, 18 billion naira in 2021, and as at 2023, it's over 30 billion naira. And this is a major reason why companies are no longer interested in supplying what are we called debtors, which unfortunately are probably government hospitals. In 2021, PSN from the Super Society of Nigeria and Joesu drew the attention of the federal government of health, federal ministry of health, to the problems of collapsing DRM, including the distortion which was witnessed in Ibodi, which was before, like I said, a national benchmark for DRM. We called for a probe. I wasn't president then. The president called for a probe. I'm sure it was my immediate past president, Mazi. Called for a probe, which was as well glamour as a special retreat to resuscitate the RN by bringing together the HODs, pharmacies, physicians, CEO of this federal health institution. The federal ministry of health agreed to the request to probe the misnomer or in the movie while accepting the concept of the retreat proposed by PSN. As frequently witnessed with government policies some and sort of times, the PSN Jurassic requests were not adhered to by the immediate past leadership of the Federal Ministry of Health. In the new order, PSN demands for a huge sense of responsibility that the DRM retreat proposed in 2021 should still hold. And on behalf of my past president, PSN is ready to sponsor that retreat so that lasting solution will be found to the issue of uh, stubborn in a drug revolving fund. <laughs> PSN also solicits legislative action to back the implementation of this sustainable DRS and the minimum benchmark that compares availability of essential drugs to all public pharmacy departments. Infusion reduced energy into pharmacy education for an impactful future. As far back as 1999, sir, the PSA and the AGM in Enugu approved the Doctor of Pharmacy program as a minimum registrable degree to practice pharmacy in Nigeria. After years of passing oscillation and vaccination from 2008 to 2015 by the leadership of PSA, the stage was set for the formal approval of the Doctor of Pharmacy curriculum by the National University Commission in late 2015. I want to believe that uh, the School of Pharmacy in Gombe if they have not started, we will make a way to make sure that the family program will start here, the Doctor of Pharmacy program. Our colleagues and our friends in the diaspora, Dr. Pant, Dr. Tomenti, my good friend Edom and Dr. Mada Mayer, they have been giving us assistance and they are still willing. They came all the way from the US and they are here in Mumbai, and I'm sure they are willing to assist Mumbai State University to realize the family program if they have not started, sir. I have a poor testimony that many of our universities have not commenced the implementation of the FAMB program. I want to quickly say, without blowing my trumpet, that my university, University of Benin, started the FAMB program. And we are happy that we are able to blaze the trail and continue to do that. For our colleagues in the civil service, it makes a huge mix of the Air Force PSN and its strategic partners who have achieved enhanced entry points, call duty, and other allowances for holders of Doctor of Pharmacy as endorsed in the existing secular. 
the AGM of this conference, I pray should be empowered. Should empower PCN to probably withhold, that looks a little bit tight, my registrar, to probably withhold accreditation of the faculties of pharmacy that have refused to commence the family program. The PCN, when reconstituted, we go ahead to set a realistic timeline for the FAMD uh, with a minimal registration of qualification to practice pharmacy in Nigeria. We at PSM, we want to continue to express our gratitude to the head of service of the Federation, the immediate past, and the present permanent secretary of the Federal Ministry of Health, who we are honoring today, for finally, alongside with its CEO of uh, Society of Family and Dr. Do, for finally allowing the consultant care that in pharmacy to become a reality in Nigeria. We also want to place a record and salute the other of our partners in Joesu, who made the consultant king a prominent feature at the five point agenda at the March May June 2023 nationwide industrial action to press for a better welfare package for all health workers in Nigeria. Presently, PSN has made requests for vacancies for the position of consultant in federal health institutions at the office of the head of the service of the Federation. And we are grateful to put on record that the Federal Ministry of Health has activated our request. And it is receiving attention at appropriate quarters. It will therefore be in order to create the necessary structure to facilitate cross mobility of our fellowship and foundation program through the West African College of Postgraduate Pharmacists in, in the universities. The reward system and experiential knowledge will be enhanced in pharmacy if academics like me and my wife uh, in our professional pharmacy can enjoy the consultancy status where our consultants and indeed seasoned pharmacists will engage to lecture in our faculties and colleges of pharmacy. Our leadership will be unrelenting in this desire in the months ahead. We shall also make bolder moves to actualize the long overdue National Postgraduate College of Pharmacy to ensure that a pool of experts improved bring in the years ahead in our quest for robust practice. As I conclude, permit me to celebrate some of our colleagues. Our own pharmacist, Issa Dahiru, and his company, SpaceX, for winning the NCC 2023 Talent Hunt Research Award through Hackathon. His company designed an artificial intelligence AI powered smart bladder device, which is used for the treatment of the urinary incontinence in elderly people. Or well, I can see 10 million here, maybe more will come. I also want to congratulate young pharmacists who graduated from my school last year. They came, they were runners up in Ireland. Pharmacist Dr. Ufoma and Pharmacist Dr. Ogedekwe. Uh, I want to uh, congratulate uh, Pharmacist Tina Lunani, she's at now, and Pharmacist Beatrice Ivanov, who won the best present, poster presentation at the recently concluded FIP meeting far in Brisbane, Australia. Incidentally, Tina Lunani was my classmate, and I'm sure I have three or four of my classmates. Present being Professor Ladibiji, Alaji Adebayo, and a couple of others who are here with me. And if Professor Jayo Before I go to the last one, those who are older than 80 years, please could you stand up and remain standing? We just want to honor you in a special way. If you are a pharmacist, you are above 80 years. Please stand right now. Pharmacy, show that again. I told us what to eat. Oh, that's what we eat. Pharmacy is for the whole Europe. We flew together from Benin. Thank you very much. I learned from 
by living ancestor who they are that those who are president live long. And I took him down for myself properly. But I want to put it on record that Senator Twain, could you rise up, sir? He has attended yearly conference for 50 years of broken. There is a pharmacist in Imo who is 98 years. He wanted to come to Gombe. But the chairman of PSM said, President, Gombe is very close. When you come to you, that is fine. We want him to attend to the home. But he is full of life. And actually, after discussing with me, he was going to his church to participate in the choir. So, if you have a child and wants to read any course, please tell them to read pharmacy. Pharmacy is still long. <laughs> Lastly, I want to recognize the fact that the first good manufacturing practice apparently was built within the university in West Africa, named Men Africa GMP Laboratory. It's domiciled in the faculty of Pharmacy University of Lagos. And this project is funded by Med Africa Foundation, New Jersey, U.S. The grant obtained was obtained by the outgoing editor-in-chief, somebody I call Beauty and Pain, Dr. Margaret Inouamoya. I don't know whether she's in the house. Dr. Margaret Inouamoya, we want to see you. Please see you properly. She is an associate professor in the Department of Pharmaceuticals and Pharmaceutical Technology. It's right here in Nigeria, not in the U.S. And I'm sure the University of Bombay, Faculty of Pharmacy, should be able to get there. The funding came from outside the country. We would work with colleagues who are there. Distinguished colleagues, I want to appreciate you for your most appreciated support in collecting it to a new level, the next level. I want to specially thank His Excellency, the Governor of Bombay, I want to thank Her Excellency, the wife of the Executive Governor, and the Deputy Governor, and Samiego wife, the Secretary to Government, 